Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today. We're going to be rebuilding the San Francisco 49ers in a fantasy style as I'm sure you guys like so much. This is a team that is... Uh, in an unfortunate spot, they lost their starting quarterback early in Jimmy Garoppolo. And under C.J. Beathard, they've struggled a little bit to win games, even against the Cardinals, who also have struggled mightily this year. And then out of nowhere, Nick Mullins, out of what, Southern Miss, comes out and has a fantastic showing under the lights in prime time. I don't know. Let's go over this roster, see what we do with this Niners team. All right, so we're going to go ahead and not worry about injuries. So everyone's going to be back, which is the way it should be. And where is Nick Mullins? The young god, where is he? Where is he, dude? He's not even on the roster. Unbelievable, EA. Unbelievable. Well, that puts a damper on things, but... What doesn't is we do actually have Jimmy Jesus back. We got Jarek McKinnon. Matt Breed is a good backup to have for sure. We can go ahead, and if you guys are unfamiliar with this fantasy style, I also do realistic. Those are on the channel in the rebuild playlist. If you guys want to see the other teams I've done, watch those videos. You're more than welcome to. But we trade older pieces and pieces we don't necessarily need for success. So I'm going to try to trade Alfred Morris. I'm going to try to uh, trade Raheem Mostert. Going to try to trade Pierre Garcon. Build around Flash Goodwin, Hook'em Horns, Dante Pettis, uh, maybe Trent Taylor will get some action. Kendrick Bourne has actually played okay. He just needs to get more touches. He's actually, like, not been terrible. Decent stats on him, nothing crazy. George Kittle has been incredible this year. Mike mcglinchey has been pretty good, but the offensive line as a whole needs to be upgraded. Joe Staley's in an interesting spot because he is 34 years old, and he'll never reach 91 overall it likely only go down so even though i think joe staley's incredible and i think the regression system is super overpowered um i will be doing a video sometime in the near future on my wish list for madden 20 and madden 21 uh franchise so be sure to subscribe for that and it's going to be overhaul of the regression system because it's going to make me trade joe staley even though i don't want to lake and tomlinson not great Joshua Garnett appears to be a waste of a first-round pick. Weston Richburg, uh, I like former New York Giant. He's decent enough. Might have to replace him through this. Um, and then Mike Person is 30. Doesn't look terrible, but as you can see in the uh, the top right there over the... Like with the XP underneath the overall, that costs so much to even get one skill point. So we'll likely have to move on from him. I say likely. It's 100% sure. And I absolutely love the defense. You guys see me trade for a lot of these players, uh, you know, often. I think they're so young and so talented. Adrian Colbert is a player I'm going to look to build around. Ruben Foster is incredible. Jaquiski Tart is super underrated. Jimmy Ward, not so great. I'm going to have to trade Richard Sherman. It's just going to have to be what happens. He is 29. Well, I don't know, actually. 20. I thought he was like 31. 29 is not terrible. Now, he will regress, but he already is a 93. We will probably be able to stick it out with Richard Sherman, I guess. Solomon Thomas hasn't turned into much, unfortunately. Um, he's still relatively cheap to upgrade, as you can see. Underneath the overall, only 6,000 XP per skill point at this point. So we'll try. It's better than Ronald Blair, former Appalachian State player. DeForest Buckner's a beast. Earl Mitchell got to go. Sheldon Day got to go. Eric Armstead, we could kick inside the defensive tackle. I think that would be his best fit. Although I'm not sure if that would be a fantastic move for the team. We're in a 4-3 right now. I don't know. I like Akella Witherspoon. We got, what, Kawan Williams here? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Cassius Marsh is not that good. We need to, we need to get a lot better. It's not going to be a year one Super Bowl, let me tell you. Matt Breida and Jarek McKinnon both went to Georgia Southern. What are the odds of two good Georgia Southern running backs being on the same team? Like 0%? 1%? It's got to be like 0 0.11. This has never happened before. That's actually really, really odd. 
And come to think of it, a lot of these players don't come from big schools. I mean, Western Richburg, Colorado State, Lakin Tomlinson, I believe, is Duke. He's Duke. Where'd Joe Staley go again? Central Michigan, that's not necessarily big. George Kittle is Iowa. Uh, Notre Dame for person. Pierre Garcon, I don't even have a clue. I really don't. He went to Mount Union in New Jersey? Is that where Mount Union is? All right, so there's a Mount Union Square in New Jersey. It's Mount Union in Pennsylvania is where it is. All right. Or, well, I guess Mount Union football is in Ohio. We're all over the place with Mount Union. Can, how, how many Mount Unions can there be? Like, actually. Jimmy G is from a small school. Eastern Illinois. Same thing as Tony Romo. Two Georgia Southern backs. Marquise Goodwin is Texas. Uh, Dante Pettis is a pretty big school. He went to Washington. So that is a sizable one. He's pretty good. We're going to look to develop him a lot. That's why you got to get rid of Pierre Garcon. And then uh, defensively, I mean, there are some bigger schools. Oregon, obviously. Stanford. Uh, Alabama. Jaquiski Tarto is Samford, which is really small. And then Richard Sherman is also Stanford. But yeah, I don't know. That offense has like, you know, wherever we can get him from kind of vibe to it. This trade is going to be Pierre Garcon and Ronald Blair for a first round pick from the Raiders. Hopefully that one is pretty valuable. He was a guy that I really wanted to get rid of. Just age and other players behind him that I want to get more playing time were a huge factor. It's got to be Dante Pettis and the Marquise Flash Goodwin show, who even he is kind of a question mark at this point for me. I think I'd like him to be a rotational role player in the slot. I want him to be wide receiver three. Dante Pettis could make a good wide receiver number one or two eventually. We need to get bring in another big receiver. And I really do mean big, like 6'3", 6'2", 6'4", one of those. All right, big trade. Joe Saley, Fred Warner for Joel Batonio and Kevin Zeitler. Obviously, left tackle is a super important position. I know the trade makes no sense because the Browns really need to improve their offensive line at tackle, but there's no way they would trade their top two guards in order to get it done. But for us, it makes a lot of sense. We've improved the offensive line uh, a lot with getting rid of Joe Staley. 34 years old, he was only going to regress. we got to get better and younger. Hard to get better, but we definitely have to get younger because in year three, he'll be like an 80 overall, and that's just not what we need, or 77. He'll go down quite a lot, which, again, stupid and sucks, but it is the way it is. Got to work with it. Offensive line's much improved. We don't really have to make a lot of other trades because this is a really good young team, and I know their record doesn't show it, but it's all about progression with this particular rebuild, in my opinion. Got to work. Just extend Ruben Foster um, and DeForest Buckner, our big players. I'm going to move Ruben Foster, I think, back to middle linebacker because... That's where he's going to get most of the action, not cornerback for sure, and get most of the tackles, hopefully most of the XP, and upgrade the fastest. So he goes back to middle linebacker. Now we have a hole at right outside linebacker. He's only an 81 overall. It's a disaster. He should be way higher. He should be like 84, 85, which is what he was at right outside linebacker. But that's hearsay. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark, see how this team's doing. Honestly, I don't think even that badly. We got a pretty good roster. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. Mid-season mark, we are 2-6. and six. Uh, I expected us to have three wins, but two wins, all right. It'll make us have a higher draft pick as we narrowly lost last week to the Arizona Cardinals. Robbie Gold is our top priority free agent in terms of overall, but who else is actually here? Bradley Pinion, so it's our kicker and punter. Jimmy Ward, I should have tried to trade. I kind of forgot about him. Uh, and the trade deadline has passed. There should be an option. Simulate to trade deadline. Why is that not a thing? I have no idea. I would like to bring back Robbie Gold and Bradley Pinion. Even though he's 36, he's a kicker. It doesn't particularly matter. We'll extend him for three years. Get him till he's about 40. He is welcomed back. And then Bradley Pinion, of course. Four-year deal actually makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, and it doesn't make any sense to Bradley Pinion. We'll get him in the offseason, not to worry. But this is pretty much where the team's going to be. I will upgrade Jimmy Jesus, get him to fit the scheme for more XP. Same thing with Dante Pettis. And I will see you guys for the playoffs, which we will inevitably miss. We did not make the playoffs. Big shocker there. Finishing 7-9 and 
actually like way better than I wanted us to do. I wanted that draft pick to be a lot higher. Jimmy G, uh, way too many picks, but overall, not a terrible season. 19 is just, again, way too many. Jarek McKinnon was pretty good. I don't know why Alfred Morris got almost double the carries, or more than double, excuse me, of Matt Breida. That should not have happened. They both average almost no yards per carry. They're primarily used as goal line backs, I'm sure. Marquis Goodwin, 89 catches, 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns, 6 for Dante Pettis, 8 for George Kittle, and 6 for Trent Taylor. Everyone's getting involved. I like it. Blocking offensive line was overall pretty good, except for Sean Coleman. We'll probably move Mike McGlinchey over to left tackle. Ruben Foster led our team in tackles with 138. Also, 13 tackles for loss and 5 sacks. What a season. DeForest Buckner had 14, though, which led the team in a lot of guys. Up there in the uh, near double digits, 9-9-9-8. Nine, 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 Pretty incredible. This defensive playbook might be pretty good as DeForest Buckner from the inside got 11 sacks, 10 and a half for Eric Armstead. Interceptions, three for Richard Sherman, two for Jimmy Ward, two for Adrian Colbert. Force fumbles, only two for the entire team and at least one defensive touchdown. It's going to be Richard Sherman. Shades of, like, what, 2014? 2013, somewhere around then? As Phillip Rivers wins MVP. What team are we again? The 49ers. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Todd Gurley. No 49ers. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Quan Alexander. Ruben Foster at number six. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Josh Rosen. Dante Pettis at number four. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Roquan Smith. No 49ers. Just noticed I forgot a coach name. Brutal. Let's come up with one now. It would probably be Jimmy Jesus. I don't know. It's not that funny. Whatever, you win some, you lose some. I don't know how I completely forgot. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Cut me some slack. So, off-season time. Big season, or big decision player negotia negotiation. I can't speak. Big player negotiations. Bradley Pinion is the main guy. We're going to extend this to five years. Bump up the money a little bit. And he is in. Welcome back, back Bradley Pinion. Also, Jimmy Ward has star development. How? Did he just get that? Yeah, he just did. Why? He's 28. A one-year deal worth... I mean, I'd be willing to pay him for a one-year deal. Even even two years. How do you like this offer? Jimmy Ward resigns till he's 30. I can't believe he's 28 already. Doesn't it feel like he's still super young in the NFL or super fresh? I don't know. Regardless, um, that's what we did. I think this team's moving in the right direction. I don't think this is going to be a tough rebuild. I really don't. Provided we have a good draft, of course, and free agency. Still really want to have a big free agency. We don't have a ton of money right now. We're going to get a lot more. Uh, and you know what? The free agent class isn't particularly good. So we could get Mike Hilton and the Dolphins and Redskins are just bidding up these guys so much. Uh, we're not going to get anybody. There's no reason to. We don't have the money for it. And the class isn't there. There's just no point. I'm going to scout. See you guys for the draft. All right, draft time. We're going to simulate right to our pick. I'm not really trying to trade up with this particular team, but let's go ahead and take a stud. We pick at number seven and number 10 in the first round, and then number 10 overall in the second, third, fourth, sixth, and seventh. I'm going to take a left tackle. Looks like a can't-miss player. Had an insane combine. Has great top three skills. Kind of checks all the boxes here. Ray Neal Shurd out of USC. Welcome to the team. 81 overall quick development, ranked number three in the class. We took him at number seven. Fits the scheme on top of that. Good run block, good pass block, great strength. This is a very good player and our new franchise left tackle. Honestly, looks like an upgrade over Joe Staley already in terms of development. Looks like a can't miss player. Although, what was his development? Was it quick? I think it was quick. Quick is not bad. Oh, we need to go draft it here. Was it quick or was it better? It was quick. Eh, it's all right. Next up, we're going Ivory Sullivan out of pit. Again, great top three skills. Good combine as well. 471 speed certainly isn't terrible for a linebacker. Not elite, especially for someone that's only 243 pounds, but pretty good. Good 20-yard shuttle. Good three cone, so he's quick, agile. Good bench press, very strong. Again, great top three skills. Welcome to the team. 80 overall, quick development. How can you say someone picked at 11? or picked a 10, and his rank number 11 is a reach. <laughs> Went down the board one spot. Unbelievable. Good tackle, great hit power, decent speed at 82, good block shed. Zone is not that great man coverage is nice. 
Strength pretty good as well. Not a bad pick. Trash going pretty well so far. An 81 overall and an 80 overall player. Can't complain. Let's make our second round pick count. Tell me this wide receiver is still on the board. Ooh, he is. Max Day out of Liberty. I think it's time. 4-6, flat 40. Not elite speed, but elite skills. At 6 foot 4 out of Liberty. Great vertical. Good broad jump. We're going to take him. 78 overall, only normal development. Ranked number 23 in the entire class. We took him at 42. Looks more like a tight end, but we have George Kittle. He's got 85 speed, which is tight end speed for George Kittle. Um, no deep route running. He is an interesting player. He's interesting. That's what, that's what I'd give him for now. We're going to be taking another receiver here, a.k.a. Marquise Goodwin V2. 4-3-2 flat speed. Uh, great three cone, great 20 yard shuttle, pretty good top three skills, only 5'8", but he is very good. Philomore Tate, ranked number 33 in the class, we took him at 74, 76 overall, deep threat style, 96 speed. This is Marquise Goodwin. That's what we just drafted, Marquise Goodwin. <laughs> Alright, another linebacker here, Brandon Pelshack, the second ranked MLB for 40 yard dash at 474. Unbelievable to me. Good top three skills though, good bench press as well. Overall, looks like a pretty good player. Awesome value in the fifth round, I'd guess. Here he is, 73 overall, ranked number 90. We took him at 106. 81 speed, 84 tackle, 84 block shit, 84 hit power. Seems like he could be an upgrade at outside linebacker right now for us. I think this was a pretty good draft so far. Nobody worth taking left on our draft board or our scouted players, so we will trade down, hopefully for a future fifth uh, or a fourth if that's available. Hell yeah, Oakland. You want to trade your next year's fourth for this year's sixth from us. Okay, all the more power to you, I guess. And I will see you guys at the end of the draft. Going to trade down again. Great draft class for us. New starting left tackle. New starting left outside linebacker. In my opinion, new starting right outside linebacker. His overall is going to jump up. More wide receiver depth. Um, we could get rid of Trent Taylor right now. But I think the combo of Marquise Goodwin, Dante Pettis, and Max Day is going to be a decent um, decent group. And then we can have a new kick returner in the drafted Fillimore Tate. So I like where this is going. I think Trent Taylor is actually going to move from 4 to 5. Or move Tate up to 4. I think that's going to be better for us. And uh, as you guys can see, Ruben Foster would be an 88 overall right outside linebacker. Not going to happen. Pal Shaq's going to play over Malcolm Smith. His overall is going to jump up to a 70, 76, I'm feeling. He looked actually pretty good. He jumps up to a 70, 78. That worked out well. Love to see that. We have an awesome new group of players. Great talent on both sides of the ball. I am going to trade Jimmy Ward at some point this season. I can guarantee you that. Guarantee it. This is a good team. Well, we're not quite there yet, but we're we're getting there. Matt Breida also potentially on the trade block. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, time to simulate to the midseason mark. Hopefully we get some XP. I'm going to uh, stop simulating just before so I can make some moves if I want to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. We're going to slide Eric Armstead into defensive tackle. He has star development. I disagree with this. Unless he got it last year. Because uh, he just hasn't been amazing in the NFL uh, yet by any means. He's still a young player. He's only uh, 25. Did he get this recently? Not that I can see. Cassius Marsh is now going to play left end. I think this is a pretty good uh, group of guys is the way I want to play it. Yeah, I think this is our best bet here. We are 2-2 two two right now. Rams are 4-0 as we look to change the momentum here. I'm going to try and see how far is Jimmy Ward away from an 80. He's close to getting XP with star development. That's going to have some value. I am going to first auto-generate. Oh, they've already, already auto-generated. Excellent. Um, is his name Victor Yeast? What an unfortunate last name. But he infects defensive lines all over. Is he offense or defensive lineman? He is a D-tackle. He infects offensive lines all over. 
All right, we're going to have to stop doing that. Simulate to the midseason mark just about. Hopefully, Jimmy Ward gets an extra skill point by then, and he will have extra trade value. I don't see him fitting in with the future of this team. I just don't. This is week eight. This is the trade deadline for us. So unless I see Jimmy Ward playing out this season and getting a lot better, which I don't, he's just not particularly good in the game, man. He just isn't. He's almost at a 79 overall. Man, I just don't see a way we, we can really trade him for value. Richard Sherman's already down to a 91. That's kind of sucks. Jimmy Ward, he's going to have interest uh, with a lot of teams, but what can I get? It's going to be an interesting trade for us. Trading Eric Armstead and Jimmy Ward, as well as a fourth round pick for, uh, well, fourth round pick. Is that next year? I think it's 2019. We just would have had, so 2020 this year. For William Jackson. Now, the reason William Jackson is so much value to me is, one, he does not have a big contract right now. We will have to pay him. That much I can tell you for certain. However, he is a good player right now. He's better than Jimmy Ward would have ever gotten to be. And to me, a new cornerback has more value than a defensive tackle. I think it's a very replaceable position. And even though Eric Armstead's star development, only 25, about 5.5 million cap hit, I think William Jackson makes more sense to us right now. I'm a, I'm a little lukewarm on the trade, though, if I'm, if I'm honest. Got to re-sign DeForest Buckner, Matt Breida. I think that's pretty much it. We may have actually had to re-sign uh, Eric Armstead as well. DeForest Buckner is going to command a pretty big deal. I'm fine to even extend this to seven years. I wonder if I can actually bring that down at all. 84 over 6 is his fair offer. We're going to give you 95.6 over 7. He re-signs, and then Matt Breida. Um, I don't want to pay a backup running back 3.5 per year, let alone 3.7. What if you, we got you to see your 30? 3.19 per year? Even that's too much. He re-signs. We can always trade him away. I don't know. It's Jarek McKinnon is only an 85. Breed is only an 82. I don't think anyone has that position just like, you know, uh, set in stone. I don't really love either of those options right now. We missed the playoffs again. This time uh, improving our record by one win. Going 8-8. Eight and eight. Not terrible. We're on the right path. I didn't touch XP sliders for this one. I should have raised him a little bit um, to make it a little bit more realistic. Jimmy Jesus. Very similar year, except interceptions are down. That's all you can say. So, better. Jarek McKinnon, uh, yards per carry are down. Eight touchdowns for Brita as the backup. Again, goal line, vulture. George Kittle led in catches, but yards went to Marquise Goodwin. Eight touchdowns for him as well. A lot of touchdowns around here. Trent Taylor had seven. Really, really would have preferred if those went to, um, what is his name? Fillimore? Fillimore Tate. He had zero receptions. He had Trent Taylor. They The CPU moves the depth chart around, and it's so frustrating to me. Because if I order it on the main screen, which acts as the depth chart, it should not get altered by the CPU. It's very frustrating when it, that happens. Ruben Foster had a good season, but Ivory Sullivan had a great season. 14 tackles for loss. Also a couple sacks there for him as the sacks are down overall, but decent pressure from across the team. Sherman and Tart both had uh, a couple picks in there. A few interceptions, I should say, at three. And then defensive touchdowns. DJ Reed had one. Who are you? Todd Gurley won MVP. No Niners. NFC Office Player of the Year goes to Todd Gurley. No Niners. Defense Player of the Year. Samson Abukam. Okay, we have to change the Rams defensive playbook because they have all these guys in here for defensive player of the year who are in the 70s. <laughs> no Niners, the offensive rookie of the year, Clay Hay. It's a fun name. Uh, we had Max Day at number eight. Defensive rookie of the year is Ivory Sullivan. All right. Brendan Palshak at number eight or nine or whatever that said. Okay, free agency time. A lot of more money to spend this year, about 15 more million than we had at the last free agency yet the class is overall disappointing austin Vlad, 
You were up to an 85 overall. Really, it's a shame we don't need a guard. But there is potential we could kick him inside to center. I don't know how I feel about that. So we offered on him. I don't really think we're going to get him. That's the only guy I'm going after. It's just like, I don't know. There's no point to really shell out massive amounts of cash as he rejects because, I mean, we don't need to. We don't need to right now. Kevin Zeitler is going down in overall, which sucks, but there's no reason to offer on him, really. Like, a huge contract. A safety named Morgan Burnett. Where have I seen that before? Here's what I'll say. This is a really good draft class. It's a shame we don't have more picks. Players will be traded in order to bring these rookies in. I can guarantee that. At the wide receiver position, uh, yes, for sure. Defensively, cornerback, Kawan Williams and Keller Witherspoon, they could be gone. Richard Sherman could be moved. Solomon Thomas, maybe. There are going to be players that get traded here 100% in order to move up in the draft. Again, I'm making that guarantee. NFL draft time. We are not going to be picking that high, 16, that highly. We need to move up. Whether it's now, whether it's in a few picks, we need to move up. I don't want to trade up into the top five, but it might have to happen. There goes Roosevelt, Kiaho, 81 overall to UCLA. Bradley Pierman, 83 overall corner out of Texas. Oh, man. I'm going to try to trade up to number three. And then trade down to number four. That's my goal. There's just no way I can move up, unfortunately. Um, there's some really good players here. There goes Oscar Campanero. Uh, that's not who I thought would get taken. I thought that Cash would get taken, a right end, and here he goes. Ooh, Curry Jennings, really good wide receiver. Maybe I can trade up with the Ravens. I need this defensive end, and I need this cornerback and this wide receiver. How am I going to get these picks? I don't, I don't know. All right, big trade here. Sorry to say goodbye to Marquise Goodwin, but it just doesn't make sense to have a 29-year-old speed receiver who is regressing and losing speed. Two fourth-round picks, one this year, one next year as well. Get it done. We now have number five overall. I would like to trade down to get more picks, but I have to take this player right now. Casey Cash out of Texas A&M. Good top three skills, good combine. Need to add him to the team. 81 overall, quick development, ranked number four in the class. We took him at number five. 82 speed, 87 finesse move. Really, really like what he brings to the table. Of course, fits our scheme at right end. We can move Solomon Thomas back over to left. And that is going to be the best move for us. Doesn't DeForest Buckner wear 99? How do you have it? What's happening here? All right, boom. Big trade. CJ Beathard. A one and a three next year for a one this year from the Dallas Cowboys, which will give us back-to-back -back picks here in the first round. I really think it's necessary. Now we have two options, in my opinion. Allen Still is my main option. And we also have Ellis Wilbur. And another cornerback we can take later. Because of the other cornerback options, I am going to take a receiver here. That receiver is Allen Still out of LSU. Six foot six. Great vertical, great broad jump. Pretty good bench press. Great 40-yard dash for a 6'6 receiver with incredible top three skills. Welcome to the team. 80 overall. Ranked number eight in the class. 90 speed. He is very, very good. And he will be adding to our receiving core. Of course, Trent Taylor's not really a guy we look to. It's going to be Dante Pettis. Marquise Goodwin's gone. So it's going to be Allen Still as our one and our two. And then Max Day and uh, Phil Moore Tate as a three and four. I think it's going to be a really, really good mix. Hopefully my cornerbacks don't go. Give me the best of both worlds. Give me options. That's what I want. Two defensive tackles available. And both cornerbacks are gone. Oh, no. I know we have Richard Sherman and um, William Jackson, so it's not like we really, really needed those spots, really needed those positions, but it really would have been nice to have the option to take one of those guys. They are going to be very good players. I think we're going to go ahead and trade away this pick in this case. Are there no first round picks next year? I see one. It's mostly just like mid-rounders this year. I don't want that. I really don't. We're going to have to do this manually. 
Who picked number one overall? I think the Panthers were up there. Seahawks were up there. Seahawks are still going to have Russell Wilson, though, probably. So, I don't think this is a good trade uh, team to make moves with. Neither are the Panthers, because they have Cam. I want a team without a QB. Who picked number one overall? Dolphins were up there. That's probably our best bet. Still Ryan Tannehill. 80 overall, 32. Going to regress. Let's get their first rounder. Give me a one... A 5 and a 6 on my end for a 1 and a 2 next year from the Miami Dolphins. Hopefully those picks have a lot of value. I mean, that's all you can do is hope, I guess. I almost want to take this player, Ben Hannum, out of Penn State. Looks like he'd be quite good. We don't need a quarterback, obviously, but that's trade value. I think we're going to take him. It's, it's, it's too great a value to pass up on. He's an 80 overall with quick development. Ranked number 6 in the class. We take him at 48. Wow, he's good. Where does this leave? Jimmy Jesus. I'm going to take a center here. Oh, he's just, combine's very bad. And that's the only area where I care for combine, really, is offensive lineman. I care about 40 as well. Maybe a linebacker. I mean, Donald Deloach looks very good. It really does. But I think these guys are comparable. Hayes and Dukeway and Josh Estes. I'm going to go CJ Wheeler in hopes that he can be a lot better than Western Richburg. He is not. It's a good pick for the value. Fits the scheme. He's just not an upgrade over Western Richburg right now. All right. Uh, we're done for the draft. CPU can do whatever. There's no value here as far as I can tell. I need to see some of these cornerbacks because they looked incredible. They really did. We will have to see all NFL. Show me some of these cornerbacks we missed. So, Pierman we saw was a beast. And right here is where we missed him. Ellis Wilbur, 79 overall, quick development. 89 speed, 80 man, 86 zone, 85 press. Really like that. And then Lindsey Berry, I liked even more. And is a little bit higher of an overall. Only plus one speed, though. Only quick development, I like that. 90 speed, 80 man, 86 zone, 86 press. He's also good. That's really what you can say. He's also a good player. Uh, and then we just traded down. And did we miss anyone crazy? Doesn't really look like it. Oh, there's their quarterback we took. That's an 80 overall. This is the one guy that kind of stands out. And there's a random 63 overall quarterback. It's a great pick, I guess. It's a 68. I saw the 8. I'm like, oh, maybe an 80. Nope. Uh, yeah, we didn't really miss out on much. So I think we had, again, the best draft class. Of course, we traded up a lot to make those picks happen. But we still had the best draft class. Nick Mullins, there he is. Oh, he's on the practice squad. That's where he was hiding. All right. Should have figured that one out. Do we rock with Ben Hannum? Doesn't cost much to get him upgraded. Jimmy G costs a lot to get him better. What would his value be as a 28-year-old 83 overall quarterback? I don't think it'd be the worst idea to field offers on him. I really don't. Given our predicament, if you will. All right, big trade here. Jimmy G, Taewon Taylor. Taewon, I'm, I'm out of my mind. Trent Taylor. And a future two for Maurice Hurst. The Jimmy G experiment run its had run its course. It's 2020 now. We have drafted his successor, and he's already near the same overall. Quick development. He's only 22, not 28 or 29 or close to 30. It costs way less to upgrade him. I think it's a better move for us as a team. And Trent Taylor served no role. We have a good group of four here. I like him quite a bit. Rookie wide receiver that could be a stud. Defensively. We're in the right position. We got cash money at left end. I'm playing them both at right end, even though on the depth chart they don't appear that way. So they both get the XP upgrades. Thinking with my head there. And um, I think maybe you think with your brain more so than your head. Regardless, I like the team. It's season three. And I think that we can hopefully do good things. Mid-season mark time. Uh, if we don't make the playoffs this year, it's going to be a Season 4 playoff, I think, for sure. It's a good team. We just got to wait on it a little bit. That's all it is. 2-5 and five at the midseason mark. Hate to see that. 6-1 and one are 
the LA Rams, but we do have some upgrade points. It's all about upgrading at this point, in my opinion. This team's going to get a lot better a lot quicker. Look at all the XP skill points. We're going to upgrade, and honestly, I know we're 2-5. and five. I think we're going to finish like 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7. and seven. It seems like that's generally the way it goes. We're going to upgrade and simulate to the... Uh, actually, I got to resign probably. would be important. All right, Richard Sherman. What do you got for me? George Kittle, Ruben Foster, Kyle Juszczyk, Chiquisky Tart, Solomon Thomas, Adrian Colbert. Wow, we got a lot of guys to resign. All right, we resigned everybody that we needed to. I'm not really going to deal with Kwan Williams right now or Akella Witherspoon. I kind of forgot I wanted to trade those guys. So that's uh, an oversight on my part. My bad. All right, nearing playoff time. We finished the season. We're in the playoffs. 10 and 6. Even better than I thought. I'm telling you, it's so weird. We're, we'll check the schedule. I obviously did not force any wins, but it's so weird when you start off the season so poorly like so poorly so many losses so few wins and then just win 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 we almost won out obviously no force wins on the right side there it's just insane to me how that works a lot of skill points oh going with Hannum was the right move 100% Look at the skill points. It's a beautiful sight. Let's check out how everyone performed. Ben Hannum, great rookie season. Arguably better than any Jimmy G put together with us. Jarek McKinnon, pretty good as well. Matt Breida, not too bad. Receiving Allen Still was a great rookie for us. 88 catches like that. Dante Pettis, 1,000 yards. Um, let's go back here. Seven touchdowns for Kittle. What a great season as well. We were just really in the zone. Fillmore Tate still has yet to catch a pass in the NFL. Crazy. Decent offensive line work. Ruben Foster was great. Sullivan, 100 plus tackles. William Jackson, 100 plus tackles. Tackles for loss. 22 for DeForest Buckner. Good lord. 16 sacks as well. 8.5 from Roe Hurst. Forgot we traded for him. 8 for Solomon Thomas. Interceptions, 4 for Richard Sherman. Only 2 for the next player, and that is Kawan Williams. And then touchdown. Sherman again with another pick six, I'd imagine. Unbelievable. Matt R Ryan, Matty Ice wins MVP. No Niners? Where's Hannum? Offense player of the year goes to Zeke. No Hannum. Defense player of the year, Deion Jones. Tavares Buckner at number six. Offensive rookie of the year, obviously has to be Ben Hannum. And then defensive rookie of the year, Blake Severns. Casey Cash at number six. Where was our other rookie? Allen Still at number three. This is the upgraded team. Hannum's up to an 85 overall with confidence, and that is just amazing because it was a gamble to play him, and he's he's a higher overall than Jimmy G would have been. So that is fantastic for us. Defensively, we're in a good spot. Sullivan's up to an 87 overall. Ivory Sullivan. Cash up to an 84 in his rookie year. Fantastic defensive interior. Here's DeForest Buckner. Um, 99 overall. Of course, wearing number 99. What did Cash end up wearing instead of 99? 97. Not bad. Rest of the team looks pretty good. Can we beat the Atlanta Falcons? That is the question. All right, let's do this. Red zone opportunity. It's got to be George Kittle, right? I know you guys want to see some of the drafted guys. Allen still. Uh, but it's got to be George Kittle in the red zone. Oh, I want to throw that. We're going to step up with Hannum. Not a good decision. Just show me George Kittle in the red zone. I will force it in there. High point. George Kittle. Wow. Third and 12. Going for Kittle. He holds on. Also, can we talk about Ben Hannum's release for a minute? It looks like Philip Rivers. He's a sidewinder, dude. He's like a submarine pitcher. I hate that. There's Kittle. It's got to be. I'm telling you. I'm forcing the ball to George Kittle every time. Every time. Oh! It's picked off by Richard Sherman. I thought for sure that was open. Unbelievable read. What a play. Oh, that's a fantastic lob pass. 
But look at Jaquiski Tart with the PBU. I don't know if I've ever heard it called that before, but great pass breakup. Dude, let me blitz him. Oh, and roughing the passers on. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Dude, we very, very badly need some points on the board. I said, you know, you could really tell this is a Super Bowl team. As George Kittle drops it. Wow. Um, Super Bowl teams make it to the Super Bowl. They don't get eliminated in the wild card. Second and goal. Oh, shit, dude. That's going to be wide open. But we got pressure. It's Pelshek. Brendan Pelshek on the sack. The Pel sack. I don't know if that's going to be a marketable nickname. All right, red zone alert. That means we actually have to score a touchdown. We got one early, and then uh, it's been a whole lot of no touchdown since. But there's Day. What day is it? What actually is his first name? Michael? It's not Michael. I don't, I don't even have a guess. George Kittle, wide open, touchdown. Oh, wow, you didn't get the second foot down? I thought there'd be a middle linebacker that drifted back over the middle. Um, but they drifted wide, left the middle wide open. So the high point was not the right decision there. Although I really do like that as an option. Might try that again. We're going to roll out with Hannum. Throw to the running back. Jarek McKinnon down to the two. Pretty much max protect. Looking for a slant or the streak. It's going to be George Kittle. How is that not a touchdown? Get your feet down, George. That's twice now. I need I need good blocking. Just give me a, a second of blocking. Oh my god! You got to be kidding me! You have got to be kidding me! Here's how that went down, right? Here's how this went down. I swear to God, no one's gonna believe me, and I, I can't even. Anyway, I hit circle immediately. He doesn't throw the ball, but I thought he would have thrown the ball. I wanted a possession catch over the middle. And then he throws a lob pass to X. What is the delay going on here for? I I'm, I hate to come out here and complain, but that's absolutely ridiculous when I have a wide open touchdown to circle, yet I throw an interception. You guys can go watch that play back. I mean, it's very obvious what happened. I told you I was looking for a slant, immediate read. They were wide open. I hit circle. Nothing happens. And I had already pressed X to possession catch, and he lobs it to X, George Kittle. It's just wild to me. We got a big face mask there. That really saved this drive a lot. And as much as I want to go to still, we're going to choose the running back, Jarek McKinnon, and uh, narrowly escape from a very bad play there. They double-team Dante Pettis, and still nobody can cover him. Easy post over the middle. There's the cross. Still! End zone. Touchdown. Man, did we cut that close, but we take the lead with uh, 13 seconds to go. That's got to be the ball game. An interception seals the deal, and that is your ball game. It was a close one. And uh, I, I don't really like Hannum's release, man. Like, feels a little slow for my taste, if I'm being honest. But a win is a win, and we're moving on to the divisional. Hopefully after that, the conference championship, and then the Super Bowl. It's been a while for the Niners. 20, uh, nope, 2012. No, 2013? Wait. Yeah, 2013. Well, 2012 season. You guys get what I'm saying, though. Um, Ravens, Niners, yeah. It doesn't, I mean, obviously not that long, but it feels like a while since they've even been super competitive as we go on into the divisional to face. Ooh, the 13 and three division leading Rams. I'm up for the challenge. All right, Rams. Let's see what you got. We're better overall with a significantly worse record. Well, I, nah, I would I would say it's significant. Three wins is big in the NFL. That's the difference between a first-round bye, clearly. Making the playoffs, missing the playoffs, could be the difference between the number one overall draft pick and the number 10 overall draft pick in some cases, I'm sure. 
Gurley one on one. You can't have that. We need we need groups of people to tackle Todd Gurley. Third and goal from the two. I hope they run the ball again. And it's a heavy, heavy run set. We're going to use her Jaquiski Tart and try to get over there. Oh my goodness, it's play action. Everyone was fooled, but Brendan Pelshack was not. Sacks Jared Goff. He looks about four foot tall in that. And we're going to hold him to a field goal. That's a win. We just got two points. We got a safety? <laughs> Is that what happened? No offense for us yet in the moments, but more defense. Third down and four. Hopefully we break out the user successfully. I'm going to use Dr. Sullivan because I think Rune Foster is a little bit better by himself. And um, that's a great play by a Keller Witherspoon. A Keller? A Kello Witherspoon. Oh, that's a touchdown. Dante Pettis. Worked the clock beautifully. And uh, that was a little bit of a dicey throw, but he didn't react well to it. So, touchdown it is. 16-10. Now in the second half, Arizona is not even involved, but it's an interesting state. The Rams are up by uh, one point. Let's try to reverse that a bit. Third down, need a conversion. This release is unbelievably slow, and Josh Norman gets a sack. That's unfortunate. Give me an offense. How could I not get an offensive moment? I almost feel like we need to run the ball here. I need Matt Brito to lay down a great block. Go, Jarek! Jarek McKinnon down the sideline! We stepped out of bounds to play it safe with our one timeout. Could have gotten probably five or ten more yards, though. That's wide open. How do you just randomly get a speed burst toward, towards the ball? Third ball. Actually, though. Third and ten. Come on. We got him over the top. Hannum on the money for Dante Pettis. Let's go. Rams call a timeout. That's a panic timeout. We're just going to run the ball. Oh, we got the first down. I want to get tackled. I want to. Here's a run. Jarek McKinnon will take the touchdown now. Big lead change in the fourth quarter again. Time to go for two. I guess they got it. All right, we're going to skip this moment. Game's over. 24-17. Bye-bye, Sean McVay. Bye-bye, LA Rams. Conference championship time. Here we come. Dallas Cowboys. Niners Cowboys. This does seem like a typical 90s conference championship, or at least playoff matchup. Second goal to run. Oh, my goodness. That's a great block. It's a great block. I think it was Zach Martin who got in the way. Yikes. Third and five. Come on. Lob. End zone. Kittle. Thank you. Finally gets a feed in. Touchdown. Dude, like, look at that throw. It's like Hannum. He doesn't look like a quarterback. That's not a release. It's so weird. But he got it there. That's a touchdown. I'll take him any way I can get him. Can we get some type of pressure? He throws it out of the back of the end zone. We've done very, very well not to allow a touchdown here. Dallas is going to take their points. And the ball is going to be in our hands. All we have to do is drive down the field, score points, manage the clock, win the game, go to the Super Bowl. Easier said than done. All right, third and 11. This has not been a very effective drive. But that is a wide open receiver. Still, still going. Inside the 10. Now, this clock's going to run all the way down. Dallas definitely should have called a timeout. I don't know why they're not. I don't... Uh, I don't want to throw an interception targeting Dante Pettis. We're going to drag him. We're going to block Jared McKinnon. Look for something. George Kittle, wide open over the middle. Touchdown. That's got to be ball game. That's got to be a user pick. GG. Easy reads. Good night, Moon. Good night, Cowboys. Game over. The 10-6 49ers against the 10-6 Houston Texans. That's your Super Bowl matchup. Okay. 
Third and three. Come on, McKinnon. First down. There it is. That's unbelievable to me. Oh. All acting. And I accidentally called a timeout. I need I need to review this in the replay. I want to break it down from you for you guys. Just so just so we all know what's going on here. Andre Hal makes the interception. I have a slant coming across the field. It's almost a slant. Uh, it's an angle route to George Kittle. Now, I lead it open. It's open right there. Maybe could have thrown it right here. Which weighed down a little bit. Should have thrown it here, right? A little later. Dante Pettis sitting down on the route. Even if I was throwing to Dante Pettis, like he should be aware of it. He doesn't put his hands up, right? Hits him directly in the face. Pop, right? Bounces off, gets picked off by Andre Hale. You're telling me that even if I wasn't throwing Andre Hale, he wouldn't know the ball's coming right to my face? Maybe I should put my hands up because I'm a wide receiver and all I need to do is catch the ball? Either way, very frustrating. Oh, man. Over-pursued. But that's short of the first down. Houston's going to settle for a field goal. Make it 12-6. Touchdown gives us the lead. We've seen this across the entire playoffs. We can do it. Did they miss the field? No, they got the field. This is the moment we got? All right. Third and five. Come on. Need a first down. We got the drag. Uh, I didn't want the touchdown. Didn't want the touchdown. First and goal from the one managing the clock is a lot better than the touchdown there. It just is. Well, unless we don't get in. In which case, it'd be very, very bad. McKinnon! Stopped at the inch line, maybe. Second and goal. QB sneak! It's Hanum touchdown! An extra point seals the deal. And all we need now with the 13-12 win. Imagine how boring of a Super Bowl this would be. Niners-Texans in 2020, where the final score is likely going to be 13-12. to That sounds like torture. Watson rolling out. Throwing deep! Wow. We just lost the game. That's hilarious. That's disastrous. Oh, we didn't get a moment? Cool. All right, 15 13 is your final. I'm sorry, San Francisco. I could not get you a Super Bowl. Because they took a deep shot and somehow Spec caught it over my safety. Oh, man, Adrian Colbert. We need you to break that up somehow. I should have switched on, I guess. I can't rely on the CPU. Um, this was fun, though. I think we built a pretty good team. Competitive, for sure. And, um, yeah. Team's pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun. Hope you guys had fun. Either way. Uh, Hanum, what is your speed? I need to see. 60. It felt like 43. But, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.